In an earlier lesson, we learned that much of system consolidation occurs when we're asleep. So we're not currently uh, perceiving things when we're asleep, and this allows the hippocampus to be signaling those cortical regions that were activated by um, prior learning so as to strengthen those memory traces. And this makes sense to do this memory processing when we're not conscious. In this lesson, we'll look at another important function for sleep. You'll recall from the plasticity lesson that uh, when we learn something, a hippocampal memory trace is formed, and that involves the increase in synaptic communication between the allocated neurons. We call that LTP, long-term potentiation. It's this neural plasticity, then, that is the biological basis of learning, and when it's sustained, we get long-term memory. Now, it raises a question, though. Is there a limit to the amount of plasticity that can occur? So the hippocampus is, is very good at, at uh, acting quickly and making memory traces for ongoing events, but is there a limit to this plasticity? And scientists think there is. And it raises then an important uh, uh, problem that sleep is going to solve. We're going to call the, the problem the danger of synaptic saturation. And we're going to say that one of the functions of sleep is to reset those synapses. So here's the situation. There's a limit to how much LTP can occur at synapses. During wakeful learning, synapses may exhaust their capacity for plasticity. Without resetting hippocampal synapses to a baseline state, the hippocampus would be unable to learn new things. Again, using our hippocampus here, here we have our hippocampus with some neurons and some synapses. After learning, a subset of those synapses have been strengthened, and this then is the memory trace for that learning event. After a learning event, the, those synapses in the hippocampus involved in making the memory trace have reached a maximum strength. So the suggestion here is, is that this plasticity can't keep happening, can't go on forever. There's a limit to how strong you can make these synapses. And as a consequence, then, the synapses that were strengthened from any particular learning event are unavailable for new learning. If these neurons are to be used for future learning, their synapses will have to be weakened so they can be strengthened again to make a new memory trace. And so here's where sleep comes into the picture. The idea is that these synapses must be reset to baseline strength for new learning. Of course, you, you want to do this only after system consolidation saves that memory in the cortex. So the role of sleep, then, is to do synaptic resetting. Sleep is going to weaken synapses that were strengthened from the previous day's learning. So sleep consolidates the memory in the cortex, but also weakens hippocampal synapses in preparation for new learning. So the hippocampus is a fast-acting, limited-capacity learning system. Sleep resets the hippocampus in preparation for new learning. Synapse resetting will cause a kind of forgetting. The synapses are weakened in the hippocampus so they can be strengthened again for new learning. And system consolidation during sleep preserves recently learned information, but synaptic resetting prepares the hippocampus for new learning. As one of the researchers in the field put it, Sleep is the price we pay for plasticity when awake.